Hey everyone, it's me. How are you? Oh my goodness, yay! We have so many people here. That's so wonderful. Um, so I'm so excited to talk to you. Uh, and hi, Greta. She says, hi everyone. I'm new to your group from a referral. I'm happy to see you. And hi, Leonard and Pat and October. Helen, Gia, Andrea, yay, Donna, so happy, Soul Stars. I have a bunch of Soul Stars on here, which is people from my membership from your Soul Program. So um, I'm really glad that we're doing this. I don't know what's gonna happen. A lot of times when I uh, do these kinds of talks, my guides, um, I let them take over for a bit. So that's gonna happen. But I wanna just talk to you a bit about how important it is to align with your truth and align with your soul, <laughs> especially when there's a lot going on in the world. Hi, Angel. So um, what I had found um, when I was younger and, uh, and even in my adulthood later on, I have a family that's very, very opinionated, very loud, very Italian. And uh, my brothers in particular, especially one, is like ah, in my face constantly about what his beliefs are. And we have very opposing beliefs, extremely opposing. And it was very, very difficult growing up trying to be seen and heard in all that noise. So I just got quiet, I stopped talking, and that was my way of dealing with it. And um, I learned later on to sit and listen, and it was really, really good for me because I'm somebody who doesn't really engage in politics, religion, you know, I don't engage in those conversations, I don't engage in um, uh, a lot of things, like, and my family is, my brother's very political, and they'll talk about that, and I really can't have those kinds of conversations because I'm not really educated in that area. But what I usually do is just sit and listen and I always read energy. That's the most important thing to me. So sometimes when, you know, when I'm getting ready to vote, you know, I'll talk to a trusted friend and I'll ask her what she thinks and I really trust her opinions on it. But I'll also listen to opposing sides and sit back and then I get into my truth and I decide what my truth is. So I, I thought with everything that's been going on in the world, um, how important it is for everybody to take a moment and get quiet and get into their truth. Because for me personally, over the past couple of weeks, with everything that was happening, especially in the coaching space, there were a lot of opinions about what we should do or how we should handle the situation in groups. And, and there was just so much stuff being thrown out there. And I wanted to educate myself on the different experiences that were happening with everything that was happening between George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. And, and you know just all the stuff that was out there, I was like, I wanna be educated in it but I'm so emotionally empathic, I have to be careful of how I take information in. But I wanted to listen, I wanted to learn, but I didn't also, like I, I watched a couple of videos and I would get like triggered by people telling me how I should be. And I was like, who the fuck are you to tell me how I should be? You know, or if I don't do A, B and C, I'm this, I'm G, E and F, you know, whatever, all those confusing conversations. And um, I went into my community, which was Membership for Your Soul, and I went to my paid communities, and I basically talked with them because they're a trusted community to me. I know them really, really well. We have a very elevated dialogue together all the time in membership and in Soul Finder Academy. So I just went into my small communities, and we, we had some, I did a healing circle with them. We did some um, talking, mainly me talking. I have to be very fair with them, it's me talking. But um, it was really good to like have this, the support of that community with me. And, uh, and what I realized was I didn't talk. I didn't give an opinion. I didn't say anything. I got quiet. And I got quiet and I went inside and I talked with my guides. And that's when I knew my truth. What is my truth, right? And I'm not going to discuss that here. Because instead what I want to do is give you the opportunity to find your own truth. I'm a teacher that believes I'm here to meet you on your path. And I'm here to give you tools and techniques for you to find your own truth and align with your soul. I'm not here to tell you what to believe in. I'm not here to tell you, um, that's not my role. That's other people's roles out there. That is not my role as a teacher. My role as a teacher is to share my life experiences, teach you through story, teach you through evolution, and then meet you on your path and give you tools and techniques. And then I say to you, make them your own. Do what you will with them. Do what you can. Because I've never been comfortable with telling people what to believe in. I'll tell you what I believe in if you ask or if I'm teaching on a particular subject, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, I, that's why I stopped doing readings because I got tired of doing readings because people were coming to me saying, what should I do or how should I be or what am I? And as much as I enjoyed the conversations that my guides were having with you guys through me, I didn't like the, the the powerlessness that some of you were feeling, not 
I want people to feel empowered to make those decisions on their own. So <clears throat> what I really felt like, so what my experience has been is like, get quiet. I talked to trusted friends. You all read that post probably that I wrote, so I'm not gonna repeat everything. And they, they were the ones who educated me on what my what I feel. And so even though they were talking to me and sharing with me and they share, you know, it's always great to have ed educated, elevated conversations with people who aren't like throwing their shit at you. Like believe this or not, you know, I just can't stand those conversations. That's not for me. It may work for other people, it doesn't work for me. But when you have a really beautiful, educated, intellectual conversation, it's so good to have those conversations and then get quiet and go inside. Now, what I do think is important for all of us is to get educated. No matter what the topic is, no matter what the subject is, no matter what is going on, whether it's COVID, whether it's Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter whether it's, um, you know, other races, uh, sexual genders, uh, gender, you know, whatever, blah, 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 all that stuff which is important. It's really important to get educated. And the way that I like to get educated is through people. I like to talk to people. Whenever I meet people, I ask them about their story. I, I, I'm sure many of you, I can see a lot of my um, soul stars on here. And I know a lot of them like Victoria and Leonard and, and, and Deidre I'm really getting to know recently. She's been in there about four or five months now. I know how they are. And I know that they're the type of people that like to ask questions and get to know you. And for me personally, I love, love, love. I can get people, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. I can get people to open up to me in a second. Like in a second, I'm knowing their story. And one is I'm a vault. I'm not gonna share your story. I may ref reference it in a teaching moment, but I'll never give a name or an identity. Two, I'm getting to walk in your shoes. I'm getting to learn what it was like to grow up in your, your life. Because I only know my life. I know what I grew up in. I know my life experiences. And I don't want my past life experiences to constantly dictate my future. So I want to learn all the time. So I think it's really great that if you can sit with, with yourself, when you gather in information, there's a lot of noise out there. You want to be able to, to block out some of the noise. You want to be able to know what is noise and what's not noise. You want to recognize the triggers that happen. I know that I was triggered big time last week and I was like, whoa, I've got to get a grasp on this. I didn't say anything because I don't do that. I pause. Um, and then I want to teach you right now how to go inside and find your truth. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. If you're, you're forming opinions based on scarcity, fear, anxiety, lack, that's not God. That's not the universe. That's not light. If you're forming an opinion from a place of love and neutrality, that's God, right? So again, I'm not telling you what to believe in. I'm not getting into that conversation. That is not the teacher I am. What I wanna do is give you te techniques and tools to come from a space of love and figure out what is, your, what is your part in life? What is your part in everything right now in all of this as we evolve? We're in such a huge evolution right now. So for me personally, I always share through story, is um, I, I always like as a teacher, you know, it, it was like, you need to take a stand and say something. I'm like, you need to stop telling me what to do. Cause then I get Brooklyn. And for me personally, I had to really like pause big time and get into myself and be like, what's my truth? Where's, where's my love? What does God want me to do? Why am I here? What am I supposed to teach? Why is this moment happening? This is for all of you. It doesn't matter if you have a platform like me or not. What matters is that we are all these beautiful, beautiful light beings walking on this planet. We all have something to say. We all have something to give. We all have something to offer. We all have something to, to we all have the ability to listen and have compassion. We all have something. And, and what's interesting to me is, I know I jump around a bit because I'm very attached to my guides right now. What's interesting to me is when I first went to therapy over 25 years ago, I think it's 30 years now, yeah. I don't know, I'm not gonna count. It's over 30 years. <laughs> um, and I walked into her office and we, I was talking about the lack of compassion I had for people or something at this time and she said, you don't have compassion for people because you don't have compassion for yourself. 
And she was so right. And when I started gaining compassion for myself, I started gaining compassion for others. So everything starts and ends with me, everything. Somebody says something that pisses me off, it starts and ends with me. There's a movement out there, I get to decide, I get to, it starts and ends with me. There's a person in front of me in pain, it starts and ends with me, what I wanna do about it. I was raised, I'm, I'm not gonna tell too many stories because I wanna get into the work. And I can't remember what I told my members already, so I'm like, do, do, do I wanna tell the audience this? What do I, what do I? <laughs> but anyway, I was raised uh, Catholic, Italian Catholic, right? Catholic, raised in a Catholic um, grammar school and high school. And we were taught very early on to give our seats to the elderly on the bus. I was in Brooklyn to um, give our seats to a pregnant woman. We were taught very early on to be, and I'm not saying what's right or wrong. You guys decide that. I'm just telling you my life. I was raised in a way that I was always observant of what was going on around me, always. And because of that, I'm like that today. If I see someone struggling, I have to go and help. Um, I, it's just my nature. It's in my, I'm sure it's in a lot of you. And I want to say for all of you guys, like when I talk about myself, if there's something that you're relating to, you've got it. You've got it. I'm just a reflection of your highest, your best, your, your, your spiritual selves. I am not any better. I am not any less. All I am is a reflection. And I'm learning how to live my life my way. So I live my life in a place of let me listen. Let me have compassion. I come first, though. So if somebody does something to me, I may not retaliate. I may not say anything, but I take care of me, me. I'm important. And then the other thing I do is I help when I can help. I'm not um, somebody who's a big megaphone type of, it won't, it's not me, it's not who I am. I've never been like that, you know? I, I like my audience, I like talking to them. Um, I'm not a protester, I'm not that type of person. I've just never been that way. I never understood it for me personally. Um, but I'm the person that's in the grocery store and like I saw this elderly man struggling, he couldn't even walk and he was trying to get pizza. You know I'm gonna be all over that. I'm gonna help. So what I'm asking all of you to do right now when we do this is I'm gonna ask you to get into your truth. I'm gonna ask you to get rid of the noise. I'm gonna ask you to align to your light. And then I don't know what they're gonna do because everything's always new for me, whatever I do in meditation, but I have a feeling they're gonna have you dissolve some stuff and show you how to align. So when an opinion comes at you, you can breathe and pause, get into your light, and a lot of times don't react in the moment, but you can decide what's your truth because that's what you need to do. You need to decide what's your truth and align with your light. Then you can go from there because you may find in your truth, you're meant to be an activist. You may find in your truth, there's a book inside of you that's gonna motivate change in so many people. You may find that you wanna educate everyone on a movie that you saw that was so inspirational to you. You have to find your way. I thank you. I, um, I am, I don't know what RH negative is. I am, um, and thank you, Kitty. Love you too. I am not a teacher who's here to tell you what to believe. I'm a teacher here to help you guide you to your soul. That's my job. My job is techniques and tools to help guide you to your soul, to your own light, so that you can live an empowered life. Somebody recently said, I don't know if she's on here, my program, Soul Finder Academy, she said, this is a treasure map to your soul. And that's what I do. So let's do that right now, okay? I wanna say one more thing, I wanna share one more thing. There's a lot of downloads I'm getting lately and, and there'll be more information that I'll share down the line. Um, it's like when, I'm gonna give you a quick little example. Good, Sonia, she's been here about writing a book. And I will take questions at the end towards this work, about this work. Um, when I'm asked as a medium what I believe in the afterlife, and never forget, I was asked years ago by uh, producers in a TV thing, and I said, uh, I told them what I believed, and I said, but this is what I believe today. I don't know what I'll believe tomorrow because I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly shifting and changing. I never want to put a cap 
on my learning. I never want to put a cap on my experiences. I never want to put a cap on my evolution. And I feel that none of us really fully, fully know what we're doing here, where we came from, uh, why any of that. We've got to find for ourselves what that is. We have to find our own truth, our own belief system, and then we have to live by it. So I know that what I believe in today, I know what I feel is my truth. And that allows me to live a life that spreads light. And doesn't mean I don't get angry because damn, I do. My people know me. Doesn't mean that I don't have human moments and stumble and fall because I friggin' do. Doesn't mean I don't grieve because I do. But what it does mean is that I have all these techniques and tools that bring me back to my light. And they allow every moment to teach me something new. So I ask all of you to learn, learn who you truly are, learn how to sit in the light of your soul, of your heart, and really get in touch with that truth inside of you. Don't jump on a bandwagon or, you know, until you're ready to, if that's what you're supposed to do. But get into your truth first, because I think that there's many great causes out there, period, and, and great things to do. You want to find what your truth is, not what your parents told you to do, your priests, your uh, rabbis, um, your Sikh, whatever it is that you follow. And there's beauty in every moment. So let's all do this right now. Okay. So again, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, hi, Kathy, a first timer. Um, oh, I, th I thought you were asking about a blood group, Maria. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very naive to a lot of things in my own. Um, and I like it. And I remember Hans King was one of my teachers. If some of you know Hans King, and he said that very early on in learning, he said, you know, I get, I'm very naive to things that are going on in the world. And I like that. And he said, because then I let spirit talk to me. And that's how I do it too. You know, spirit will take me to what I need to learn from who I need to learn it from. But then they make me, I always bring it home. If I read a book, I'm always bringing it home. What do you guys think? What is the truth here? So that's what I want to teach all of you. Okay. So what I would like everybody to do is to close your eyes. We're gonna do a bit of a meditation um, and breathe into your body right now. Just take a couple of breaths. And then I don't, like I said, they always take me down a different path. So we'll see what we'll do. So each one of you has been given breath because you're gifted, you're beautiful, you're light. You're a child of God, universe, source, whatever speaks to you. But that breath in and of itself means you're a gift to this world. Now what I'd like you to do, there's a light inside of you. And you may not see the light because some of you may struggle with seeing it, but you can pick where it's at. So I want you to breathe into that light and just notice where it is. And again, you may not see it, you may feel it, you may hear it, you may just stick your fingers on your heart and be like, my light's there, and that's okay. There's never any rights or wrongs with the way that I work. There's your way. I give direction, and if you want to go another way, you trust your inner guidance. So breathe into that light. And as you breathe into it, I want you to recognize that you are a soul, that you are a master of your own light, that you're a guide in this world. And your head may be saying, oh, this is crazy. No, I'm not. Or yeah, I am. Whatever is going on has no bearing on your breath with this light. All your being is now in this light. And as you breathe into it, you might make it a little bit bigger. You might give it a shape. I want you to be very creative. I want you to think out of the box and I want you to use your imagination. Notice if any chakra is more energized than another. So now you're all empowered. And what you're going to do now is you're bringing in the light from up above. And for you, it, it may not come from up above. And again, there's never any wrong or rights with my work. There just is. 
And as you breathe the light in, more of the light in, you're gonna breathe it out. And notice if you exhale it out through your mouth, through your heart, through your stomach, it doesn't matter, it could be through your first chakra. But when you breathe it out, it's forming a bubble of light around you. So you're gonna take a couple of breaths from up above, inhale, and then as you exhale, you're breathing all this magnificent light out. And it's just surrounding you in this incredible bubble. So do that a couple of times and I'm going to say something else, but I just want you to have your own experience with this. Now, what I want you to notice is where the bubble of light is in reference to your body. Some people might have it five feet out. You might have it two inches out. Find a comfortable distance, distance where that bubble of light can live. For me, I always give a reference so that other people understand. Mine's usually a good five, six feet out. I like a lot of distance from the light. Some people need it on top of them like cellophane wrap. There's no right, wrong or rights, remember? It just is. So play with that light and just see where it sits. And now you're gonna to touch it with your finger. And when you touch it with your finger, you're now creating an invisible shield to all the noise that's outside. And the reason why Spirit's asking me to have you do this is because they want you to recognize that you have the power within you. That you don't need outside power to give yourself a protection of light around you. And I use the word protection lightly because that's a, a, a difficult word. Now they want you to bring your attention back inside of you and they want you to put that really strong, beautiful soul light. It's this amazing soul light. It was gifted to you when you were born. You probably had it before you were born. It could have been the beginning of time. I don't know. It's up to what your belief system is. But this beautiful light is sitting somewhere inside of you. It could be your heart. It could be between your heart and your stomach. It's almost like a teardrop, it's like a flame, and it's just sitting there and it's burning and it's magnificent. And I want you to bring your inner awareness to that light now inside of you. The light outside is doing its job. It's keeping the noise out. It's keeping the energy out. It's keeping the empathic, the stuff that makes empathics go a little bit nuts during a time of difficulty. All you're doing is focusing all your inner attention on this, this, this teardrop of light or this diamond of light. It could be different for all of us. And you can even put your fingers on your body where that light is right now. And I just want you to breathe with it. And this light has breath. This light may change colors. It may take a different form. Mine's getting a little crystallized. Everything is correct. Now this light is giving you information and the information is your truth. Now it may not be saying words exactly now. I have a feeling it's more vibratory. It's more energetics. It's more what people call codes, but there is energy coming from this light into your whole being that's aligning you with your soul and with your truth and why you're here born in this particular time in this world, because there is something important that you're meant to do. And it doesn't mean that what you haven't, what you've done up until now wasn't important because it's all important, but spirit just wants us to anchor into the energy of moving forward in a very empowered, light, love, beautiful way. Breathe into that a little bit. And what I want you to do is send breath back and forth. You're gonna see the light is breathing with you and you're breathing with the light and the light's breathing with you and you're breathing with the light. Now I want you to ask the light what the light loves.
And I want you to tell the light what you love. And it may be a list of things, it may be one thing. Now I want you to also tell the light, whatever you're struggling with right now, it could be your own personal issues or it could be environmental or um, what's going on in our culture right now, in our world. It could be whatever it is, it could be a couple of things. I want you to really, really allow yourself to have a dialogue with this light about what is troubling you. Now the light's not answering you right now. Instead, it's wrapping you in more light from the inside out. This light's getting bigger and it's filling up your entire body in your truth. And I want you to breathe this light throughout your entire body. Feel it in your feet, your ankles, your legs, your pelvis, your body, your stomach, your heart, your throat, your face. Notice if you feel different, if you look different as you look at yourself from your inner perspective, your inner awareness. Now that main light that you started with, the initiating light, it jumps out of your body into your hand and it becomes a shape, a solid type of item, whatever it may be, can't find the words right now, doesn't matter. It's solid, it's a shape and it's in your hand. And I want you to hold it and it may even be cold, it may be hot, doesn't matter what it is. You may not even see it but you can close your hand and you can feel it. And what it's doing right now is reminding you that you always have the ability to find your truth, to come back home, to come back to your love, to come back to your light. And this particular object in your hand belongs to you. And it wants you to recognize that it's always with you. And all you have to do when you have a moment of uh, trying to figure something out or have an opinion or you're hearing a lot of noise, you can close your hand around this object and you can remember your truth. And then you can stick it in your body in that initiating place. And once you make that connection, the light bursts open inside of you and brings you to awareness of your truth. So I'd like you to do that right now, practice it. It's in your hand, you may have already done it and you're sticking it in your body and it just bursts out into this light. Now what I want you to do now is this is your toolbox. You have the surrounding light, you have this incredible tool that you've just given. You've got all the light in your body your light may be a different color. It doesn't matter. The reason why I use the word light is because for me, it's got such infinite possibilities of energy. So you may want to take the surrounding wall now and you may want to pack it in a little bag. And you may want to keep the rock, whatever the light was, whatever the object was, for me, it was like kind of a rock. You want, may want to just keep that in your body or you may want to put that in the bag too because the light's always with you. It's always in you. This is just a key. It's almost like a key to open it up. And you've got this little satchel, this little bag with you now. Now I want you to breathe into your body. I want you to notice if you feel different from when we first started.
And then I want you to say your name to yourself three times, calling your spirit back into your body. And I want you to open your eyes. So for those of you who just joined, I started the meditation around 17 minutes in. I didn't realize I was gone that long in it. Um, it's like about 13 minutes, 14 minutes. It'll be a really good tool for all of you to have, all of you to use. Um, I'll go to your questions in a second. Um, basically what they're trying to show you is that it's a simple tool that you can always activate. So many times we spend our lives believing that we don't have the power, that we need others to activate what we already know inside of ourselves. Now, of course, I teach programs, so I believe that you take programs, you get coached, you get helped by people to learn the tools and techniques in order to create the activation, right, of yourself, your own inner wisdom. My goal as a teacher is to always bring people back to their wisdom, always bring people back to themselves. It's not follow my way. It's like, this is what I've learned. This is how I did it through all my turmoil. Let me teach it to you and bring you back home to yourself. So that's my biggest goal as a teacher. So they just gave you a tool to bring it back home to yourself. Now, the thing that I want to suggest to you is anytime you're in a moment of difficulty, there are two sides. There's the separation from God, universe, and spirit, which is usually lack, scarcity, anxiety, fear, hate. And then there's the God energy, which is love and light. And as anybody who knows me and follows me, I'm not a unicorn riding love and light all the way type of person. I'm a very practical minded medium. But I do believe that I want, not believe, I know that I always wanna come from love. That when I'm in scarcity, fear, anxiety, that I'm not in God, I'm in ego, I'm in the darkness. And I wanna bring it back home to the light and then take my steps from there. So I offer all of this up to you and hopefully it worked. And I saw somebody, I'm gonna read this, um, but I saw October, you were struggling with it. And she said, I'll try again. And the reason why you may have struggled with this, if you struggled with it, doesn't mean you're bad, doesn't mean you can't get it, it might not be your way. So. Chalk it up to that. Hey, this chick's talking about light and, and light walls, and that's not my way. You know, you may not learn that way, and that's okay. It could be that you're not allowing your imagination to run, so you're struggling. A lot of times I teach people around the world, like thousands of people, how to do this work, right? So what I teach them a lot of times when they're telling me they struggle, I know that they're struggling because they're in their linear thinking. They're not allowing their imagination to run. So I always teach, let your imagination run. We were just talking about symbols in Soul Finder Academy, not membership. And people are getting a lot of symbols. And I always play games with symbols. I don't just say, oh, it's a duck. What does a duck mean? I'm like, oh, if the duck was a famous person, who would it be right now? If the duck was um, a song, what would it sing to me right now? If the duck wanted to be another color, what color would it be? Everything has information. Everything's evolution. So you always want to play in imagination when you're doing this work, because that's where the light is, that's where the love is, that's where our guides are, that's creativity, that's our soul. Um, so let me see where you guys are at, but hopefully that helped. If it didn't, it's okay. That's okay too, you can go back to it and listen, it'll be on this page. Carol Lee, did I see that it's your birthday? I think I've been so busy today on phone calls, but I think I saw it was your birthday. So happy birthday, Carol Lee. I don't know if she's still on. Um, Sonia says, love this. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to see where people were, how people were with this. Jill said, wow, Marilyn, intense love is how I'm feeling right now. Amazing. Good. That's where we want to make decisions, right? You may decide another way than what I've decided, right? And that's okay. But we want to make decisions from love. We don't want to make decisions from anger, hatred, fear, anxiety. So again, you may have a different cause than I have. I, 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 I was, look, what I said to my members, when we started having these conversations in membership about what was going on, I said, res I respect your opinions, respect mine. If we need to have a conversation about something, when somebody brings to my attention, I said something, one of my students, and they're like, you really, you know, you upset me when you said blah, 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 blah. When they do it in a respectful way, we have a respectful conversation. 
And that's what I ask people to do, you know? So you may have something else that you believe in and that's totally fine. Um, Suzanne says, I feel more relaxed, clear and peaceful. It was an amazing journey. I'm so glad. Maurice says that was wonderful. Marilyn, oh, I lost it. Uh, hold on. I just wanna see, and if anybody's struggling, let me know. Don't be embarrassed if you were struggling. That's what I do, I teach people. That was one to find much more settled. I love that, Maurice. Um, okay. Purple's a great color, Colette. It's, uh, it's the highest spiritual color for me. So it's a great color to see, which is wonderful. Hello, Carrie. Uh, Sheriff said, I loved it. Good, good, good. That's all right, Vicki, go to 17 minutes in once it's on and you can get it, it'd be really great. Uh, Donna's a soul star, beautiful. I'm feeling much stronger, more calm, relaxed and confident, good. Um, okay, was it okay that I cried? Yes, I'll tell you why, Donna. So Hans King, who I brought up before, um, who's no longer with us on this earth plane, I went to a reading for Hans King and uh, to a reading for him and it's when all my gifts were really opening up, like they were opened and I didn't know what to do with them. And he gave me this beautiful reading and I was just crying because he, he knew my gifts and everything that I knew, like spirit told me, but I was like, and you hear this man say it. And I was crying and he's like, when you cry, it's because you're sitting with your truth. You don't get to sit with your truth very often. And I, that reading was like almost 15, 16 years ago. I don't even remember how long ago it was. And so whenever people cry in my reading, I would always say, you're getting to sit with your truth. So that's what's happening down. It's a beautiful thing. That, that's okay, October. So for whatever reason, it didn't work. Don't just move on from there. That's all. Take what you like. And believe it or not, there was a lot of activation in that. So notice how you feel after. Notice how you feel tonight when you dream. Notice your dreams. Thanks, Marie. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Marie. All right. Uh, yeah, go back to the replay and go into 17 minutes. Kathy says, peaceful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lana, I have two dogs, so I, I get it. Uh, grateful I finally always have to play back so I can do this without dogs barking. Good, 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 and welcome. Um, she must be new to me. Um, uh, thank you, I was in physical pain and I'm wiped at the start of this. RA and Lyme, feeling significantly less pain. I'm so glad and I'm sorry that you're struggling with all of that. Okay, so. I'm gonna take this. So if you wanna share any specific experiences, I'll be on and I can answer. If you have any questions for me, um, I love that, Sal. Truth drops, I haven't seen you in a while. So Cher said, I hope I'm saying your name right. I saw a sword pointing downward from my heart. The handle was in the heart, blade running downward, sword of truth. And you know what the swords are in the tarot, um, I teach tarot, is uh, um, their thoughts. Swords and tarot are like breaking through the thoughts. So it could be definitely truth. What's your true thoughts? The shape in the hand was a ballerina. Oh, I love to dance. That's beautiful. Perhaps through dance, I can cut through to truth and cut away what doesn't serve. The color was iridescent white. Yes, I love that, love that, love that. We're actually playing a game in membership and um, members don't know the answers yet. But one of them was dance. So I love that. So that's beautiful. Very good work, Cher. I love that. Okay. Uh, Dashka, another soul star. I love feeling the light inside of me. Um, I put it in my body just above my solar plexus. Love feeling my light. And Dashka is also a nurse right now. So she's, you know, going through a lot. Uh, Carol Lee, is it your birthday? Isn't it your birthday? I'm going to tell you if it's Carol Lee's birthday. Yes, it, no, it's not, maybe it's not. No, it's her birthday. Everybody wish Carolee a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Carolee. <laughs> I saw the full card when you said put some, put everything in the sachet. That's great, Carolee, because you know the full card's about taking risks, it's about being new. We're all being asked right now to take a risk in our lives. We're all being asked to risk something greater. We're all being asked to listen differently and have and form different relationships, especially the relationship with ourselves, right? So it's really great that you got that card because it's allowing you to have an experience with a new way of thinking, a new way of being, you know? So you put that in your sachet. Plus the beautiful thing about the physical object, you could draw it. So we do, we haven't done, we did this like last month, Sandra did it with you guys. I don't know if Sandra's still on, Sandra Paley led the group and membership of the drawing, but you could draw the sword 
you could draw those things. And it's such a powerful experience when you use color and light and do that. <laughs> Getting all the happy birthdays to Carol Lee. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, okay. Jill said, I saw a pyramid. That's where my light lived in third eye and heart. I love that. So pyramids are so powerful, right? You know, and Jill's, Jill's in my program. So I know Jill really well. Jill, it might be interesting for you to read a little bit about pyramids right now and like the whole discussion of how pyramids came about and how they were built, how they did. So there's so much magic about them. So um, this would be really, really good for you uh, with everything that you're doing and what you're building in your own life through uh, the work that we've been doing. So that would be really great. Um, oh, thanks, Peggy. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Let's see what Carrie said. Carrie said, getting caught up in taking sides between arguments has taught me it is not the best way for me. I'm better off being more neutral, able to see both sides. This is where I'm focusing on my light and inner guidance to be enough. As an empathic person, having your techniques help me to trust my own light of truth and allow others to experience what they need without me getting fanatical in between arguments. Yeah. So um, I agree with that, Carrie. I, um, I think it's best to step out of arguments and to find your truth. And then you can usually kind of Sometimes you can alleviate the arguments with your truth and with your light and with your love. Sometimes you can't. In my family, I usually leave the room because uh, there's I there's a couple of people in my family that aren't listening no matter what. So, um, okay. Sonia said, stepping onto a new path after losing my amazing husband so suddenly. I'm so, so sorry, Sonia. It's important guidance, so needed. Thank you. You know, Sonia, when you experience an, a, something like that so so uh right away and i think i think most of us i don't know if all of you are but i know for me personally during this experience during the first six weeks of COVID, and i'm gonna get to you sonia during the first six weeks of COVID, i was like in a biblical experience i'm still kind of in a biblical experience because i'm learning so much and evolving but i've been in a bit of grief lately and i've been really experiencing grief and i a friend of mine lost an uncle today and i said to her you know there's so much there's just so much grief in this moment and then when you lose someone in this moment I feel like I feel so much more for you. But what I want to say to you, son, Sonia, is you're showing up for yourself by being here. And I feel that your husband would love that. You know, he would love the fact that you're a light in his life. You're a light in his life and you're a light in your life and that you're going to continue to shine your light. And I don't feel like like what I'm feeling from him is his light hasn't gone out. Like his light is only blazing bigger and brighter. And I think he had a sense of humor, your husband. A lot of spirits have sense of humors on the other side. By the time I get to talk to them, I know this was soon. But I feel like that just embrace that light. And what I have learned as a medium is you can have an even stronger relationship with them in spirit than you did in the physical plane. And it's a story I'm going to share eventually when I can finally get some things off my plate to share that. So it's great. Um, shape I got was a parasola. Kimberly, the light told me it loved ice cream because it's creamy and decadent. My light was a huge lotus, a velvet white in color. I gave it to my higher self. I love this. So Kimberly is in my programs too. And she's also a mediumship and a, a medium and a painter. And she just did a beautiful, beautiful meditation. I heard that meditation was amazing in, in membership for your soul last week, Kimberly. So thank you for that so much. Hi, Margaret. The shape I got was a pear. It was silver. So with whatever you got, you can break it up um in you can break it up she just said he, he would yes yeah, dry and beautiful he would okay good i'm glad that that meant something to you um whatever you got you can break it down right so kim margaret we could play right now like what is a pair to you what is silver to you if pair everybody could take their little beautiful little uh item and ask it right now to sing you a song like, I love that Kimberly got ice cream, which was great because she, it's something enjoyable. It's something that, like, I love ice cream when I have ice cream. I don't have it very often, but when I have it, I love it. There's something beautiful about that. So ask your item right now to give you a song. What song does it want to give you? And then ask it what color it wants to give you. It might be a different color. And then notice if the color is related to a chakra. If you don't know your chakra colors, the first chakra is red. These are my colors. People have said, your colors are wrong. I'm like, I don't care. First chakra is red. Second chakra is orange. Third chakra is yellow. Fourth chakra is green. This can be pink. For me, it's usually a mixture of blue and green. So it's more like an aqua. This is blue. This is indigo. 
to me, this is white with lavender specks. So it could be that. Um, so see what light it wants to give you. Ask it if it was an animal, what animal it would be. Everything has information. I teach the dot, dot, dot technique and membership, and they know to not just stop with a period. Donna said, uh, my outside light was golden like a shield. There was also pink surrounding me. My light was between my heart and solar plexus. She's another nurse, Donna. The item that showed up, I think you're a nurse, aren't you? Uh, were a, a moonstone crystal and turquoise crystal. I put them in a silk purple pouch. Beautiful. These are soul stars. Beautiful, beautiful work. Um, oh, look, Paula, another soul star. Saw pyramids too. So you and Jill can talk. Um, love it, Margaret. Not sure of the song, but the words coming through are shine on. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, Moon River was the song. The color was red. My favorite. Great. See how easy it is to do, how easy it is to communicate with these things. So what I want to leave you with is a summary. So you don't have to go into a 13 minute meditation to do this work. What you could do, everybody right now, let's do this right now and we'll do it in, um, in the chat so we can do it in the chat right now everybody right now pick a color that makes you feel really safe everybody pick a color that makes you feel really safe a color that makes you feel really safe okay oh an energy worker sorry donna that's right i forgot that's still the same thing you're a front line girl <laughs> This is great. Sure, what you're saying is great. This is beautiful, Cher. I love this. Love this. I'm going to just share some of this. She says, I want to use dance as a tool to help women recover and thrive after sexual abuse. Great way because if you know, which I'm sure you know about sexually abused people because you want to do it, they have such struggles with their body. Um, the sword may be being a warrior for women who have, who have oftentimes lived in environments where the truth was denied, calling to the truth, helping them feel safe. Sounds like you stepped into your truth, honey bunny. So really great work. Great, great, great work, sure. I love it. Okay, so we have all these colors coming through, which is what I wanted to do. I love it, love it, love it, because I'm going to teach you a really easy way. Um, and Kitty, I agree. We were changing on a DNA level. The itsy bit. My light was Mar Markaba. The itsy bitsy spider, blue cobalt, the eagle comes during your meditation. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So you all picked a light, okay? So from now on, I wanna teach you something in the moment. We're gonna keep doing this. That light can be a light that's your wall of light, okay? So say you're in a moment where you're outside and there's a lot of friction, and there's a lot of noise, or you just saw something on Facebook, we wanna put that light up. Now, I don't like using the word protection because I feel we're always protected. And if you adopt an experience or a belief system that you're always protected, we don't have to use that word. Now, as a medium, I've been doing this work for a really long time. If I feel something's trying to get into my house when I'm dreaming, I'm shutting down my house in my dream state. So I know I'm always protected. So that light is the wall of light now, okay? That's the wall of light. Now, so you put that up, something's coming on. Now we're going to go into which chakra is this truth, this soul light living in? So tell me what chakra it's living in. If you don't know the chakras, you could just tell me where in your body because some people don't know the chakras. So where in, Sandra, I love that song, Love is Like Oxygen. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> where in your body is that, uh, is that light living, that little teardrop living? So where is that or whatever it was for you? You know, a sword. Um, I, I love the imaginations that's coming up. So everybody tell me where that is now. So Jill says heart. I know it takes a while. It's delayed. Heart, sacral. Heart, great. Great. I love your understanding of white share. It's great. Heart. Okay, a lot of people have heart, throat, heart, navel chakra. Carly, we're playing a really fun game in membership. Make sure you go into membership and play. Anybody in membership who didn't see, I put up a game today, and I asked, there's a whole secret thing happening. So go into membership for your soul and play the game today. Um, heart, okay, third eye, great, great, great. 
Um, Sandra, I just saw your message, sweetie. And the best thing to do is to get into an online community where you can find like-minded people. It really does help. And I think my members will tell you being in a like-minded community. So I'm glad you came here, sweetie. I'd love for you to listen to the meditation I did, which was 17 minutes in. And uh, I think that'll help you, honey, to find some light inside of you. Um, it, it, I know it's not easy to start anew, um, but that could also be a belief system that you have or an excuse. When you get with like-minded people, you don't feel like you're, you're it, you don't feel like it's a struggle. So that's what I would suggest to you, honey. But my heart goes out to you, and I understand. And I know it's very difficult right now for a lot of people. Okay. So now, what's your object? What's your symbol? You could share it or not. You could tell us what it is. So what is your object? What is your symbol? Because I'm giving you a tool, a three-step tool. What is your object? What is your symbol? And then I'm going to tell you how to summarize it so that you could do this without having to do the meditation. But I suggest you do the meditation first and then do this. So you have this in your system. So, so I don't need to, to talk to my guides. I can talk to them like this now. In the beginning, it would take a good half hour to get into their energy and to communicate with them. And, but now I can just do it like this. And that's what I'm trying to teach you right-minded. Um, so if you don't want, uh, Sonia, if you, I'll come back and talk to you about membership. Um, if you, or you could also email us at info at Or even care at com. Those are the ones I get to. And that'll help you to, I can tell you all about it. Um, why didn't the care go in? Okay, so you do, you have the, okay, you're all putting in your little things, a branded agate, 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 right? Because that's a crystal apple cylinder. So October, you did get something, ball of light. Okay, great. So since a lot of you did this, if you didn't do it, I would say go through the meditation and definitely do it. What I want you to practice is, and I want you to make it your own. I have Lisa on here. I have so many soul stars on here that know how I work. Hi, Tina. Um, Tina, you're definitely going to want to watch the meditation at 17 minutes in. Hi, Mary. Um, so what I would like for you to do is definitely make sure you listen to the meditation that's about 17 minutes in because that is the foundation for this work. And then what I'd like you to do is the next time you're triggered by an outside experience, I want you to stop, pause, take a minute. I want you to put the beautiful color around you as the wall of light. I want you to take the object that you have, close your eyes and just connect it to wherever that light is in your body. And then I want you to breathe into it at least three to 10 times. I would take three to 10 breaths. I'd say seven to 10 breaths. And I feel you will pause enough where you will align with your truth and then ask yourself, what am I feeling? What am I really feeling about this situation? Doesn't mean that you go react right away because there's too many layers of this for me to teach in this one little live, but it'll make you pause enough where you'll align with your truth and you'll get rid of the trigger. And then you can make a decision based on your own heart and soul. So that's what I would have you do. Okay. Um, so it's a three-step process, but Mary, I don't know if you got to see the, if you did the meditation, but definitely go back and do the meditation. And, um, a sword is great because it's cutting through stuff. You know, none of the, all of these, uh, things that you're getting ball of light, uh, ace of hearts is great. An apple, a cylinder, um, the, the, the selenite, all the different things that you're getting are great. So what I want you to do, again, I'm going to summarize it. When you're feeling triggered or there's something going on or you're trying to make a decision, you're trying to find your truth, you're going to pause. I would walk away from the thing if you can. But you can even do this if you're in a conversation with someone. See the light around you. Don't include them. If you're talking to somebody, don't include them in that wall of light. Get the object. Feel where you are, it, where your light is inside of you. Connect it. You can connect it like this, like holding it wherever it is for you and then breathe into it. And then just say, I'm summoning up my truth. I wanna know how I feel. What is my truth? Show me my truth. And it may not show you exactly in the moment. It'll definitely calm you down enough. But what it will do is start a, a tumbleweed effect into your truth, into what you need to learn about yourself. 
So that is what it'll do. All right, guys. Uh, I thank you so much. Oh, sure. So what does it mean if you see the bubble in front of you and you struggle to extend the back of yourself? Doesn't mean anything. Mine, I mainly saw in front of me. I feel it's back there. I don't need to see it. If you felt like it needed to be complete, you can complete it with breath. So if I felt like I really need to be surrounded in this circle of light, I would do it with breath. And I would breathe and just in my, so really everything I'm teaching people is how to take their inner vision, their inner perspective, their inner, inner seeing, how to direct it to things so that you're not being bombarded by outside. So even when you're talking to your guides, when I teach people to talk to their guides, I'm using their inner perspective with breath to connect with their guides. So I would connect with that light and just breathe and circular passion and put my inner perspective, my inner seeing, my inner guidance, my inner, the way I see, I'm trying to explain how I see. We can all close our eyes right now and put your finger out in front of you and you could, your inner perspective, your inner seeing is directed towards that finger. Does, can everybody do that right now? I'm trying to teach you how to do this. So if you close your eyes, you put your finger out in front of you and you put all your inner attention on that finger, that's what I'm teaching you how to do. When you talk to your guides, that's how I'm teaching you when you're going into a light inside of you, you're taking that inner awareness and putting it towards that object. That's, that's empowerment. That's your gift. That's what you have to do. It's that friggin' simple. So you just do that and that'll help you. All right. Uh, makes complete sense with the song Sound of Silence being the song I heard. I always sing that song, Carolee. I love it. This is so helpful to know how quick and powerful it can be for me to transmute and shift myself. I'm so glad. Uh, I'm feeling so calm right now. Good. I'm glad, glad, glad. Um, great, Lana. Uh, thank you so much for this. I really needed it. Good. I'm glad. All right, guys. I Yeah, definitely, Tina. You're going to like the meditation. Tina and I have been communicating a tiny bit in many chat. Um, you guys, anybody who wants to know more, you could go into my Facebook page, my business page, and go to the message button, and you can message us. Just hit that, and we'll respond. And I'm in there, just so you know. Like, a lot of times I'm in there. My assistant, Laura, is in there. So if you go to learn more, let me show this to you real quick. So if you guys have questions or you want to know more or you want to know about one of my programs, you could, hold on a second, let me show you how to do this. And I'm in there, guys. Where's the Facebook Chrome tab? Facebook share. Hold on. I'm going to show you where it is. Show and stream. Make me small. Whoops. If you go to this button here, learn more, you will be taken to, um, oh, that's not right. That's got to change. Send message. Go to contact you and hit send message. And then what happens when you send the message? I'll, I'll get this fixed. Woo! So you should be able to send us a message. Yeah. Send message. Where would you like this button to send people? To messenger. Oh, my God. I better not touch a thing. I'll get it fixed so that you could do it. I think I just messed up my Facebook. Okay, there you go. Send message. <laughs> Oh no, I'll talk to Trisha. But yeah, we'll make sure there's a button there that says send message and you can send a message to us, okay? All right, that's it. Um, I shouldn't touch things like that. I should leave that for my my team. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh, look at that, Tina said, I'm very excellent responding and everything. Thank you, Tina. Yes, we do, we really care. Um, so, oh, Paula said, that's so awesome. I would have, it would have been my 14th anniversary today and I'd ask the question, how do I deal with that? Then you started talking about this and I got the ace of cards. I read it as look after my heart and myself, look out for number one. I love that, Paula. I'm so sorry, honey. I really got to tell you, anybody who's dealing with a lot of grief right now, I, I feel like don't, don't deny the grief, allow the grief to come up. I know for me, it's been coming up a lot and I'm allowing it to come through. And I think it's really good because we get to release what we're grieving so that we could create something new. And we don't get to create something new if we're just holding on to all the grief, right? We get to create it if we allow ourselves to feel it and move it, move through it, and then we get to create something new, which is so good. 
Yeah, you gotta love technology. I messed that one up really bad. <laughs> I gotta go tell Trisha now. Um, all right, guys, I'm glad that this helped you. I was a little nervous about doing it, but I'm really glad that it helped you. And uh, thank you so much for everything. And um, I just appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll be doing a live next Tuesday again at 3 p.m. I just haven't figured out what that is yet. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.